Hi, my name is Ashish and in this video we will see regulatory compliance in Microsoft Defender for Cloud. First, we are going to understand what is a regulatory compliance. We will go through the dashboard, we will add new standards to the regulatory compliance policies, we will manage the compliance policies, we will see the, the standards on which regulatory compliance are measured. So let me just quickly log on to the portal and take it from there. I am logged on to the portal. So if I go to the Defender for Cloud. So Microsoft Defender for Cloud continually compares the configuration of the resources that are deployed in your subscription with requirements, requirements in industry standards, regulations and benchmarks. The regulatory compliance dashboard will provide us the insights into the compliance posture based on how as an admin, we are meeting specific compliance requirements. So if you are on the Microsoft Defender for Cloud, we click on a regulatory compliance. And if you see, the scope is uh, the Azure Security Benchmark. These are other uh, compliance standards, ISO. 27001, PCI DSS 3.2.1, SOS TSP and these are the Azure Security Benchmark. This is this. You see ISO is applied to this subscription. I look for this compliance. And on the basis of those compliance and controls, we are getting these recommendations, right? So if you are, uh, are compliant, if you want to be compliant against one regulatory figure, then let's say you want to make sure that your environment is compliance to this benchmark or to this benchmark, then you'll have to make sure that all of these conditions and recommendations are met. Right. So these are control. If you would click on specific control details, like it is talking about privileged access, separate and limit highly privileged administrative users. You click on control. What are the control defaults? So it gives you that ensure that you are identifying all high business impact accounts, limit the number of privileged administrative accounts in your cloud's control plane, management plane and data workload plane. And this is the Azure guidance, which talks about in detail about this specific control. It's a shared responsibility between the user like us and the, the one that is provided by the Azure. So if I go back, you click on manage compliance policies. You go to your subscription. This is a setting. Go back. If you want to add an environment here, like for Amazon, Google Cloud, you click on that specific environment. You add a connector name. Then you add your AWS account ID. Same way, if you want to add a GCP environment, you'll have to figure out all these options. You come here, go back. And while, and while you are on a regulatory compliance, and if you want to add more standards, right? So you click on manage compliance while you are on regulatory compliance in the Microsoft Defender for Cloud, you click on manage compliance policies. Click here, go to this subscription. You click on security policy under policy settings. These are the industry and regulatory standards. And if you want to add a more standard, you click on add more standards. These are another standards which are available like HIPAA, Swift, ISO.
from here you can add those standards as well let's say you want to add this azure cis 1.1 click on add exclusion assignment name the scope I have only one subscription or you can uh, set the resource group. Let's say you want to add it on this resource group only. Review create. And when you click on create, it will take a while until the change takes effect. So it, it can imp around take two to four hours for these changes to take effect and when if you want to explore uh, a specific benchmark whether you add a new benchmark or you want to explore an existing benchmark you just click on this and these are the automated or def definitions that are available in that specific benchmark what all uh, policies or things are being added when you add a specific benchmark so that is how you can explore a benchmark like what does it do now from the regulatory compliance if you go back from here from here as well now you see this Notice the different compliance controls that are mapped to the assessments that are, that we discussed before. Now, if you select PCI DSS, now you these are different compliance controls. So now, if you see the encrypt transmission of cardholder data, it talks about use strong cryptography and security controls and what not so let's see what see if you see this define access needs for each role including this if you see this there should be more than one owner assigned to subscription right so in in some of them you might see an option of a quick fix like there is no option you might see so mm -hmm. if i click on here if you drag it down which are simple ready to go things on which on that you will see a quick fix option and then when you apply a quick fix right the freshness interval to applying that policy or to that change might be uh, 30 minutes while right? right so and you can download the report as well from here like you want a report for uh, azure security benchmark scope is this you click on download in csv format it will prepare a csv or a pdf for of the report for download and it will be downloaded on your uh, downloads folder like this you open the file and you will see the data like this All right timestamp compliance control compliance control name what are passed and what are failed Right, so you can download the report for every benchmark if you want to create your own benchmark. So once you create your own initiative, a custom initiative, Microsoft Defender for Cloud allows you to add it as a security policy. So if we go back to the portal again, if you go here, now for that you would have to go to the Azure policy click on here you click on definitions then 
you click on a new initiative definition you give a name of the definition you define the scope and on the basic step scope would be to basics of the location of that initiative location is the new policy definition and then when you did you give it a custom benchmark like here you can type in 1.0 category is category next you add the policies here you can add your policies or the custom policies that you have created or you can pick up from the built-in policies as well let's say for the sake of this lab I do this you create a group a parameter parameter name and then you create an initiative and then you add your custom definition to the Microsoft Defender for cloud and your resources are uh, scanned on the basis of those uh, these these controls as well right and then when you are done with it I am so sorry You click on OK and then you will see that. Now if you go to the regulatory compliance again and now if you click on uh, audit reports these are the audit reports that are available to you on the basis of ISO or different standards that are there. Just download the audit reports, have a look at it. And now if you want to do a continuous export and compliance over the time workbook, right? You go here click on environment settings you you uh, you go to the environment settings you click on that subscription you click on continuous export export is enabled uh, which uh, workspace you want to select Now, in which if you want to select all recommendations, all right, then you would go to the regulatory compliance, select all or the specific ones. Export configuration, you select the resource group. You, we have only one target workspace, and then you click on save. This will continuously log the data. streaming update what not you click on save and then you can see the workbook compliance over time workbook and then you can go to the workspace click on save
changes may take up to 5 minutes to be reflected i'll go back and now under the journal section you see workbooks compliance over time workbook is this it will give you the workbook you do this and then you will see the hmm then you will see this the compliance over time workbook to read and analyze I believe this was informative for all of you guys if you have any further queries please mention them in the comment section and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you have a good day